Hi everyone, Stepan here. In today's video I'm going to start the series on the modern defense, also known as the Robach defense, named after Karl Robach. A very close relative to the Pirts defense we've, we've just uh, finished uh, the series on. And the modern defense is slightly different, uh, sli uh, di venomous in a slightly different way. And white has to prepare, be prepared for it uh, as well as for the Pirates defense and black should know what he's doing be because the differences between the Pirates and the modern are quite huge. Now what is the modern defense? Modern defense is a hyper-modern opening, as the name says, in which black aims to give up the center to white, give white the opportunity to take up the center with pawns on e4 and pawns on d4, and then black tries to disrupt, disrupt that center afterwards. So the modern defense is played after pawn to e4, with black responding with pawn to g6. Now black is going for his normal uh, hyper-modern setup with bishop to g7, castling short, playing d6 and then going on from there. The main idea for black in the modern defense is going to be to strike through the center with the move c5. Uh, white has only one response here. Once black relinquishes the center with the move g6, you should take it. So pawn to d4, taking up the center, and white plays bishop to g7. And now you already have the makings of a hyper-modern system, uh, similar to the King's Indian defense or the Benoni defense, in which black is playing on the first three ranks, leaving his pieces here, trying to castle his king and only then get involved into the real fight. So seemingly uh, black is neglecting the classical chess principles and white is uh, playing according to the classical chess principles, but black has uh, threats afterwards and black can compensate for the loss of ideal play, I would say. Now, uh, this is where we are going to be branching out. This will only be an introductory video on the modern defense, and uh, I'm going to make more videos on the specific variations. We are going to go over the standard line with knight to c3. That is going to be one video. One separate video after that is only going to be the Tiger's Modern, named after Tar Tiger, uh, Tiger Hillarp Persson, uh, a Swedish grandmaster who introduced his own system into the modern defense, which is quite extraordinary. Then we are going to be looking at f4, uh, the three pawns attack, the, the position with c4, bishop to c4, which is uh, the bishop attack, c4, which is the Everback system, and knight to f3, which is the least active position to play for white, which is the two knights variation. So there are going to be six more videos in the series on the modern defense. Now let's uh, just give you a brief overview of what the opening is about. Let's say white continues with the main move, knight to c3, the standard line. This is the, the main move, and arguably the best move for white. Black continues in hyper-modern fashion. Black doesn't go for any uh, central uh, squares immediately. Black plays d6, opening up his light squared bishop, and preparing either the move e5, as in the Pierce defense, or the move c5, which is most likely to happen in the modern. And if you play the modern defense, openings you should know and which you should play uh, against d4, which complement each other greatly, are either the Benoni, or the King's Indian defense, because uh, white will have three pawn setups, three pawn structures that he's going to aim for. We are going to go over them uh, a bit later on. Uh, and those are uh, the Morozzi bind, bind pawn structure with pawns on c4 and pawns on e4. The Benoni pawn structure in which the black pawn is on c5 and white is uh, playing for the weakness on d6 and the king's indian pawn structure in which the black pawn is on e5 and black is trying to play f5 so these are the three pawn structure structures you have to know and these are the two complementary openings to the modern defense so remember that if you play the modern against e4 two very good openings to play against d4 are either the king's indian or the benoni defense because they could help you develop your style of play and understand uh, understand the pawn structure in the middle games better. Now let's continue. Here white has several choices. White could either go for f4, going in for a sort of Austrian attack uh, from the Pierce defense. White could play bishop to e3, which is the most principled move. White could also go for a move such as g3, and there are other moves we are going to go over all of them in detail in the standard line video. So white definitely has a lot of setups. Uh, and... 
Let's say white continues with bishop to e3. Black goes for his standard plan. For this introductory video, I'm going to use the tiger's modern setup as an example. Uh, here, from this position on, on move 4, black would choose between several moves. Uh, now the main move has become pawn to a6, which is the tiger's modern. Uh, if you want to transpose to the peer's defense, knight to f6 is the way, and now you have now we have the Pierce defense, the standard Pierce. This is actually the makings of the 150 attack, where white is going to play queen d2 and castle long. So if you want, you can still transpose. Or after bishop to e3, you can play the move c6. And uh, this is the second most often way uh, the, the modern defense is played, going for the same idea, but with a slightly different pawn move order. But let's look at a6, because this is the most modern defense-like move. a6 is preparing a simple queenside expansion. Uh, now, one thing that should be noted, the tiger's modern only works if the white knight is developed to c3, because otherwise, after your main idea of pawn to b5, uh, the pawn on b5 isn't threatening to dislodge the knight with b4, and white can simply respond with the move c3, so this should only be played if the knight is on c3. So after a6, white continues with queen to d2, you continue with b5, white's main move here is f3, and knight to d7. Uh, the main difference between the Pirts and the modern is that black is delaying the development of his g knight to f6, which is one of the first moves in the Pirts defense, and uh, black is not giving white the option of having the strong move e5. Of course, e5 is a much weaker move here because the knight hasn't been developed yet. Uh, here white can continue with, uh, either with h4 or with, F, uh, or with uh, a4, striking on one or the other side of, side of the board, and black will have to adjust. But you can see the makings of black's idea. Black's main idea here is to finish his development by going bishop to b7, c5, trying to expand on the queen side, eventually playing knight to f6 and then castling. And even though black doesn't have that much active play and even though black hasn't contested the center that much, uh, black's play and black's pieces are actually perfectly harmonious and there aren't that many threats to black's position. I actually prefer the, prefer the modern to the peers because it's slightly less, less risky. Uh, the fact that you don't have your knight on f6 significantly restrains uh, white's options. Now let's look at one sample setup. Here I've only given a king to white, just to show you what black wants to do, and to show you one important principle about the modern defense. Uh, basically, whatever white is doing, you are not going to enter a conflict until the middle game, and more often than not, you are going to be able to develop all of your pieces and uh, get a posi position such as this one before any exchanges happen and before any real... Uh, uh, central tension is resolved and very often you are just going to be playing around white's pieces. You are going to playing around white to be playing around white and preparing your pawn trusts and your pawn uh, expansions on the queen side and in the center afterwards. So your main idea is to keep your pawn structure as such, sort of a dragon formation in the Sicilian, except that you still have your c5 pawn. It's most often going to be exchanged, but for now you have it. You are going for this fianchetto structure with your pawns on g6 and d6, and the other pawns not moving. And on the queen side, you want to play a6, b5, c5, expand, and crush white. So your main idea is to develop and then to break through the center. Now, white, of course, has chances of his own, and white's play is slightly easier. And uh, I believe that most grandmasters uh, actually prefer white in this position. Uh, the reason is that white has more space, as shown here. White is controlling a lot more key squares, and white has uh, easier peace play, I would say, because it's at white's leisure to, to castle whichever side he wants, it's at white's leisure to decide which side of the board he's going to be attacking on. Uh, we already said that white can either play h4 or a4 here, and white has sort of a freer hand in play. Let's look at some other variations. After e4, g6 the modern, d4, bishop to g7, why doesn't have to go for c3? Another popular way of playing is f4, the three pawns attack, similar to the Austrian attack, with the difference of the knight not being on f6 yet. So after d6, knight to f3, now black could opt for knight to f6, similar to the Austrian attack, or black could play something different once again with... Uh, an expansion with c5 and uh, black black would either go for b6 bishop to b7 so you you have much more options than against the the austrian attack in the peers this knight that isn't on f6 is giving you those options
another way for, for white to play, and probably one of the most aggressive ways, is bishop to c4, the bishop attack, looking at the weakness on f7, which is especially weak once... Uh, since the, the knight isn't on f6 yet, and you don't have an option to castle. So d6, knight to f3, knight to f6 is the best move here. And this is now uh, very similar to the peer's defense. Queen to e2, castles, castles. And you have... Uh, you can see that white has more space, you can see that white has more peace activity, and you can see that black is still to break through in the center. Another way to play is c4, which is going into the Averbach system with d6, knight c3, knight f6. And after knight to f3, uh, you have transposed to the king's Indian defense, as I said, a very complementary opening to the modern. And after bishop to g7, white can also go for knight to f3, and after d6, knight to c3, the two knights variation, which is a slightly improved uh, classical pierce for, for black, because once again the knight isn't on f6. So white definitely has his options, white definitely has ways to get you out of play. White actually has ways to transpose to the king's Indian defense, should he wish to. So you need to, to be prepared against a lot of things. Now let's see. Uh, the first uh, pawn structure that I wanted to talk about is the Benoni pawn structure. And if white gets what he wishes to get, he's going to have one of the three. The first one is the Benoni pawn structure where you have a weakness on d6 and you constantly have to be on the lookout for the move e5 where black is going to either exchange those pawns and uh, give white a very strong d5 pawn or where, where the d6 pawn is going to be under a lot of pressure because you don't have the option to play e6 otherwise the pawn is undefended and white is going to have plans of knight to c3, knight to b5 and putting pressure on d6 so Benoni plans. Another pawn structure uh, which white is aiming for is the king's Indian pawn structure, which we saw white could get easily with transposition from the Averbach system. And here, once again, you need to know what to do. The modern is very complex because you need to know a lot of plans from a lot of openings. Uh, your main, main plan here is to push through with f5 and to transfer your pieces to the king's side for an attack. And make sure that you are, you are faster than white's pieces on the queen side. Uh, and the third pawn structure is the Morozzi bind pawn structure, which white could also aim for with the move c4 and exchanging his d4 pawn for your c5 pawn. As I said, your c5 break is going to be your main main break, and once you exchange and the knight takes, then white can be left with the Morozzi bind setup in which you have uh, much less space, your, your pieces are quite restrained uh, when compared to whites, and your only better piece is your light squared bishop, which will hopefully be either on b7 or somewhere more active, such as e such as e6, and white's light squared bishop is going to be stuck on e2. So those are the, the three pawn structures you need to master, because uh, if white gets what he wishes for, he's going to enter one of these three. Either the Morozzi bind setup with pawns on e4 and c4, or the King's Indian setup where you are going to have to find breaks with f5, or the Benoni pawn structure when you are going to be weak on d6. So these are the, the variations that we are going to go over. We are going to go over each one in great depth because they are all very different. I'm going to talk about uh, specific ideas in each opening for both sides, and hopefully you can find a weapon of your own. Let me just show you an example of how black could go badly wrong. Let me just flip the board. Uh, the modern defense is good for black, but it's also very venomous, and if you are not careful, you could be in trouble fast. So e4, g6 the modern, d4, bishop to g7, knight to f3, while it goes for the standard line of the, uh, for the two knights variation of the modern, d6, and now uh, white cho uh, chooses to play bishop to c4 instead of knight to c3, bishop to c4, a very normal developing move, a very venomous move, and now white is going to aim to castle kingside, develop his other knight to c3, develop his other bishop to e3, perhaps queen to d2 or queen to uh, queen to d3, and continue from there. And here, black can already go badly wrong. As we said, uh, developing the knight to, F to f6 is not, idea, uh, is not an idea in the modern defense. You might be tempted to play the move a6 and uh, to play the move b5. You might want to get your bishop to b7. However, if you play a normal developing move such as knight to d7, you are already losing in this position. And this is just one trap in the modern, which I'm going to show you. I'm going to go over more in the specific videos. But here already white has a winning advantage, because now white can take bishop takes f7 check, the best move is actually not to take the bishop, but you are losing in any case. So let's say you take, 
king takes f7 and after knight to g5 check you either lose your queen or you get checkmated uh, the first idea is king to e8 and after king king to e8 knight to e6 your queen is lost after knight to g5 if you go queen to f6 check uh, king to f6 then queen to f3 check and this is checkmate you can't really do anything taken 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 there's nothing you can do and if after knight to g5 you go king to f8 then once again knight to e6 winning your queen so there are a lot of traps like these uh, after d6 bishop c4 a very normal move knight to d7 where you can lose the game immediately so the player with the black pieces if you, if you uh, decide to play the modern defense you need to be aware of the move order and this is one opening where the move order is actually crucial uh, in the Pierce defense you are allowed many more transpositions and much more flexibility and uh, even though the, the, the knight on f6 is dis restraining you and uh, giving white the option on e of e5, it's actually helping black castle much sooner. Because in the modern you don't play knight to f6, you can see that here you are two moves away from castling and it's going to be much harder. Thus, your king often becomes a liability on the f7 square, especially with this knight on f3 coming here and the queen coming into f3. So we are going to go over traps like these. Uh, so six variations to cover six very exciting openings they are all different i have to say i'm looking forward to the tigers modern the most because i think it's the is the best way for black to play and tiger hill a person definitely helped develop the theory and i hope you are excited too uh let me know what you think let me know which uh variation are you looking forward to the most i hope you liked this introductory video and i and i that i managed to give you some idea of what the modern defense is about and we are go going co to continue soon uh, thanks very much and uh, stay tuned for more chess. See you later. Bye bye. Hi everyone, Stepan here. Today I'll continue the series on the modern defense with the Averbach system, uh, which is a very interesting way for white to play against the modern because it. It's very versatile and it often leaves black on the back foot not knowing what to do and getting out of the mainline modern defense theory. Obviously uh, the, the line is very similar to the King's Indian defense so many uh, positions are going to transpose and that makes the Averbach system very uh, very tricky for black to face and uh, often players who, who play the modern defense even though they should be aren't well versed in the King's Indian so the Averbach system might be uh, a good system for d4 players who, when they see that their opponent plays 1g6, could force him into the King's Indian, which they know well and their opponent doesn't. So you might use this as, a, as an ace up your sleeve to, to trick your opponents. Uh, the opening starts after pawn to e4, pawn to g6, the modern defense, d4 bishop to g7, and now white plays the move c4, and obviously this is the the advanced pawn structure which you would often get out of the king's indian defense with a slightly different move order and once black plays d6 white continues with knight to c3 and this is now the Averbach system uh, the eco code is a41 as opposed to most modern defenses where it's b06 uh, because it often leads to the king's indian and here black has uh, four main moves two of which lead to the king's indian two of which don't and uh, black also has two sidelines which uh, which i'm going to cover briefly uh, first of all the main move in this position is knight to f6 and this is now the normal variation of the king's indian this uh, this opening is going to be covered in the d4 series in the king's indian defense series so i'm not going to go too much into this obviously this is not the modern defense anymore and the second move that leads to the king's indian is in this position where black plays knight to d7 after knight to d7 uh, knight to f3 is the main move and now e5 uh, and after bishop to e2 uh, knight g to f6 uh, castles castles you have now transposed to the orthodox variation of the king's indian and uh, with a slightly different move order, you once again have a d4 opening. So once again, this is going to be covered in the in the d4 series within the King's Indian series. And uh, what I mentioned at the start of the video, uh, this move order might be very tricky for black to face because most players who play the modern defense uh, are obviously going to be prepared for uh, peered structures and King's Indian structures. 
but the slight difference in the move order might confuse them and you might enter the main line main 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 line theory of the king's indian without them being aware of that obviously against stronger player players is not going to work but it might be a nice trick so d4 bishop g7 c4 d6 knight c3 if black continues with knight to f6 it's the normal king's indian and after knight to d7 you're going to enter the orthodox king's indian if black doesn't play these moves e5 knight g to f6 and castles then he's going to be slightly worse so there's basically nothing better for black to do so these two moves we aren't going to go too much in depth in uh, the next two moves I wanted to cover after d6, knight to c3 are two sidelines which are not very popular uh, in the Averbach system and often you might confuse uh, players who play the modern with this move order because uh, you are aware that the main break, break in the modern defense is the move c5. Once again, if you haven't seen the introductory video on the modern, please do uh, to grasp the basics. So c5 is a very common idea as well as e5. e5 most often leads to the king's Indian defense positions and c5 will often lead to Benoni type positions. So the two sidelines which I wanted to talk about briefly are c5 which I don't believe is good in this position because of d5 and now as we saw in some previous variations black's only pawn break is e6 and after e6 knight f3 ed5 cd5 you now have the Benoni pawn structure and you have transposed to the Benoni which if black doesn't know what he's doing this is bad if he knows what he's doing then it's also not that good obviously black has one trump in this position and that's the queenside pawn majority which is going to be very good if the pieces get traded off but black is a far far away from trading off all the pieces and uh, in the meantime white has a simple plan of knight d2 knight c4 knight b5 putting pressure on the d6 weakness and uh, simply winning a pawn and obviously in the Benoni there are theoretical ways to avoid losing that pawn but as I said if you play the modern defense then you probably aren't the master of the Benoni and this is going to confuse you so in order to avoid that after knight to c3 I would recommend that you don't play the move c5 because you will get uh, an unfavorable Benoni structure. Uh, the similar thing goes for the move c6 which sort of leads to Marozzi bind positions uh, bishop to e3 knight f6 f3 and now even though the pawn is still on d4 uh, even though the pawn is still on d4 white has created this very strong center in which the f1 light squared bishop is the only deficit because it's locked down behind its own pawns but i think white has a, a much better chance of attacking and white can castle both sides obviously it's better to castle king side but it's fairly easy for white to continue a6 by black preparing the move b5 bishop d3 b5 knight g2 e2 castles castles knight bd7 cb5 ab5 b4 white is trying to lock down the king side pawn avalanche and I, I think this position is just pleasant for white it's it's not that it's bad for black but I think that this pawn center is uh, much better than what black has here and black is either going to have to play for e5 or for c5 c5 is very hard to pull through e5 is not that clear because black can go d5 and weakening weakening b5 obviously so I wouldn't recommend after knight to c3 that you play c6 or c5 and they are not the main lines for a reason. I just wanted to cover them briefly because in the modern defense those are very thematic moves and your opponents might be tempted to play them. So remember that if c5 is played you play d5 and if black doesn't play e6 then it's going to be really hard to activate his pieces. If he does then you have a Benoni pawn structure and if your opponent plays c6 then you go for a setup with uh, f3 and castling short or castling long if you feel very aggressive then castle long and try to be better than black so i wouldn't go uh, too much into these two anymore uh, the next variation i wanted to cover is after the move knight to c3 uh, where black plays knight to c6 this is the cut of variation and uh, this line is going to be fairly similar to the main line with pawn to e5 with the difference of white developing his bishop to e3 and now uh, in the normal e5 lines which we're, we are going to see in a minute uh, black often wants to develop his bishop to g5 provoking the move f6 because black plays e5 and in this position after bishop to d3 uh, he obviously doesn't want to lose another tempo so this is quite different another way white can play which i think is better uh, is simply forcing the knight away and this slightly resembles the Nimcovic defense because the knight goes for a walk uh, all over the board and the move here after knight to c6 which i would recommend for the players with white pieces 
is d5. After d5, uh, the knight has only one good square, basically. That's knight to e5. And now you continue with f4. All of your pawns are sufficiently defended. So now this is some weird uh, Aliokin defense something uh, where the black knight is moving around the board and white is expanding in the center. Obviously your pawns could prove to be a liability if black manages to activate all of his pieces, but as you are taking up central space then it's really hard to, for black to activate, especially after the move knight to d7, which is the only move here. You can see that white has a huge uh, space advantage and that white stands better. Knight f3, knight c5, trying to, well, trying to activate his piece and open up his bishop. Uh, bishop to d3, white offers this trade, uh, the black's most active piece for white's inactive piece, locked down behind this pawn chain. And the best move for black is actually to take, because the move b4 could come, uh, could come in a minute if black doesn't do anything. So knight d3, queen d3, knight f6, castles. I just love this position for white. Uh, it's clear that you are going to play the move e5. It's clear that the f6 knight is going to have to move as well. One nice plan that uh, I have played myself is e5, d5, uh, f5, the knight moving somewhere. Usually the knight goes to d7 and then back to c5, but then you have b4. And then you play bishop to e3, queen to d2, exchange this bishop, h4, h5, and win the position. So I think this is fairly easy for, for white to play. Uh, so after knight c3, the Averbach system, knight c6 could be punished uh, with the move d5. Of course, the position isn't losing for black. But it's much easier to play for white, and why would you want to move your knight around the board if you don't have to? Uh, the main move, however, after knight c6 isn't d5, uh, it's bishop to e3, and black now grasps the chance to play e5, d5, knight c to e7, and here you can choose between g4 and c5. Uh, once again, the, the advantage of the move bishop to e3, allowing the move e5, is that black's bishop on g7 doesn't have that much space, and uh, I think playing against this bishop is a very good plan against the modern, and black is going to have to figure something out. Obviously, black wants to play the move f5, get a sort of king's Indian pawn break, so one of the moves is designed to stop that, the move g4. Uh, the other move, c5, is simply searching for white's pawn break. If you remember what I was talking about in the last video on, on pawn structures, uh, you want to look for a pawn break where your pawn chain ends. At the tip of your pawn chain lies your pawn break. So for white it's obviously the move c5 and for black it's obviously the move f5 and uh, both sides are going to want to stop that. Obviously uh, a useful move for black would be 6, a use would be b6, a useful move for white would be the move g4 and uh, white can either choose to play his break here or to stop black's break, so g4 is one of the moves, after which f5 comes anyway, gf5, gf5. In most king's Indian pawn structures, black is going to recapture with the g-pawn. And now white has the option of playing queen h5 check. Uh, covering with the knight isn't good, uh, the much better is to play king to f8 and after bishop to h3, knight f6. The position goes on, it's, it's uncomfortable for black at least. Uh, and I really don't like these positions. So the coat of variation as well, uh, I, th I think is inferior for black and I think that white stands better or at least that white has a much easier game. So after knight c3, beware of the move knight c6 and uh, be careful playing it. I mean, it's, it, it's a very tricky move for black to play because you need to know tons of theory and you need to be prepared for both e3 and then the moves g4 or c5, or you need to be prepared for the move immediate d5. So after bishop e3, e5, d5, knight c7, white doesn't have to waste the tempo. On g4, white can play c5 and allow f5, and now both sides are trying to break up the position as soon as possible. I think the g4 is slightly better, uh, because you can get c5 in anyway, and trading this pawn for this pawn might be an okay idea. I mean, both sides are going to have a kingside attack. But in any case, knight c6 is, I, I would say, a slightly dubious move, even though the engines understand it. I don't think humans do as well, and it should be avoided. You should basically play uh, positions which are easy to play. You don't want to make your life harder. Uh, the main move uh, in the Averbach system, let's just go over the opening moves once again, e4, g6, d4, bishop, g7, we've been looking at the three pawns attack, we've been looking at the bishop attack so far, and uh, with the move c4 going into the Averbach system, white is uh, creating a sort of king's Indian pawn, uh, pawn structure in the center, 
preparing to play either d5 or e5 in some positions and uh, trying to have more space in the center. Black continues with d6, the only logical move, knight to c3, and now black's uh, most common continuation and the best continuation is the move e5. I mean, why not play e5? Knight f6 obviously leads to the king's Indian. Knight c6 we saw isn't that good. Knight d7 leads to the king's Indian. c6 and c5 are slightly inactive and e5 is the is the best move by far. Now, you might be wondering what about the queen exchange. That, that's actually an end game in which black stands fine. If white goes for d5, black is going to recapture with the with the pawn if he recaptures with the bishop then f4 is coming and you are losing space so d5 queen takes qu king takes this is an okay end game for for black you have an outpost on d4 which you could use easily this is one of black's uh, main trumps in the position i would recommend the maneuver such as knight to c6 knight to d4 knight to e7 knight to c6 looking at d4 and you basically want to get all of your pieces looking at this square uh, if you manage to control this square uh, you are going to have a strong piece in the center and another thing is that in these moroxy bind structures where white has pawns on c4 and d4 the bishop is not that good so this end game is actually good for black the fact that the king is stuck in the center doesn't really matter because there are no queens on the board and white is a long way away from creating any attacking attacking chances uh, conversely uh, looking at the d4 square as an outpost black always has the option of playing c6 thus not leaving white the option of entering d5 so i think that this this position is fi fine for black so after the movie 5 taking on e5 really isn't good for white and even though the engines think the position is slightly better for white i think it's hard to play so once again i wouldn't recommend making your life harder uh, two main moves here are knight f3 or d5 let's look at d5 first d5 basically plays against the the bishop and black once again wants to find the pawn break at the tip of his pawn chain so f5 immediately should be played uh, you are once again in th in the king's indian pawn structure position uh, black should play f5 another move black can play is knight d7 uh, but after bishop to d3 I don't think black is fast enough and obviously black is stopping the c5 break but uh, you should look for activity and go for the principle of offense being the best defense so after d5 instead of stopping white's ideas you should push through your own with f5 uh, the general rule in most closed center positions especially king's indian type setups is that once your opponent plays f5 you take it uh, usually that's the correct thing to do advancing would lead to problems on the king side and uh, taking would i mean it would give you a strong square for the knight but it would give black a very strong pawn which would be hard to control so after f5 ef5 gf5 once again black recaptures towards the center uh, creating this solid pawn chain uh, typical for the king's indian defense leaving white with the option of checking the king which is taken queen h5 check king f8 not a big deal uh, g3 preparing to fianchetto or to play bishop to h3 which is a more common idea queen to e8 trying to exchange the queens queen d1 d1 declining knight f6 and play continues from here um, whether this is the best way for white to play is arguable um, i don't think it it is so the move d5 is fine and these positions are okay but i think that the move knight to f3 should be played instead of that so after knight c3 e5 you have the option of d5 which leaves black with a clear chance to play f5 as soon as possible immediately in fact so you are giving black uh enough counterplay and giving him a favorable king's indian instead of that instead of that knight to f3 should be your move of choice and this is basically the main line of the Averbach system and this is the only true Averbach system and we are going to look at one game uh, karpov uh, versus seiravan in which yasser seiravan managed to defeat anatoly karpov with with this system with the black pieces so after knight to f3 uh, black continues with knight to c6 and if you remember the last position we were looking at the cut of variation the bishop went to e3 in this position the bishop is going to g5 as i said provoking the move f6 uh, so bishop to g5 f6 and now the bishop retreats uh, provoking the f6 weakness uh, isn't such a big deal but you are weakening the light squares and uh, black is going to have to waste the tempo on uh, on f5 anyway so 
it's a fine move. I mean, if you want to develop your bishop to e3 immediately, then the 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 pawn would have still been on f7, so it might be better to have the pawn on f6. Uh, but let's go back just for a second. After the move knight to f3, the main move in the Averbach system, black doesn't have to continue with knight to c6. There is another move. After knight to f3, uh, black can continue with e takes d4. Uh, leaving white with the Moroxi bind pawn structure and with the bad bishop on f1, so knight takes d4, knight c6, bishop to e3, uh, knight g to e7, bishop to e2, castles, castles, f5. Once again, black, black goes for the f5 break, and in this position, uh, white doesn't have that much central control, and this is why I think this is the best way for black to face the Averbach system. So after knight to c3, play e5, the most active move. You don't have to be afraid of the trades. The move d5 is met with f5 immediately. So after e5, white should continue with knight to f3. And now you can either play knight c6 or you can play e d4, which I would recommend. e takes d4, knight takes d4, knight c6, bishop e3, knight g7, bishop e2, castles, castles, f5. Once again, when your opponent plays f5, you take it e takes f5. In this position it would be too scary to take with the g-pawn and you no longer have uh, a pawn on e5 so you take with the bishop. Bishop takes d4, knight takes f5, bishop to e3, takes, takes, white has a ruined pawn structure, black has all of his pieces very active and I think this is actually good for black. I, I would rather have black in this position. White has a structural weakness on e3, black has a, a great knight uh, which has a permanent outpost on the e5 square, white has a wonderful bishop which can come into f5 if uh, black i'm sorry has a wonderful bishop which can come into f5 and black has the file i mean he can exchange and uh, he could fight for the file so nothing major but black has definitely equalized and even the engines agree so let's go over that once again this is what i would recommend as, as the best line for black let's just flip the board so g6 the modern defense d4 bishop g7 c4 d6 knight c3 the Averbach system play e5 don't be afraid of d5 and the queen exchange. Don't be afraid of d5 because you play f5. Uh, knight to f3 is going to be played. And now e d4, knight d4, knight c6, provoking the knight. If white takes, you have no problems because you are controlling the key square on d5, not allowing black to enter. White is going to continue with bishop e3. Knight g7, continue developing. Bishop to e2, both sides castle. Play f5. White is going to have to take. If he doesn't take, then this advance is very scary. Ef5, bishop d4, knight d4, knight f5, bishop e3, knight e3, f3, a great position for black. If you instead uh, decide to continue with move knight c6, this is slightly less active. White has the move bishop g5, provoking f6, bishop e3, knight h6. You're looking at the g4 square, and now white can continue with d5, d5, queen takes d8, king takes d8, castles. You have the endgame once again, but... Uh, I don't think it's as good. Firstly, white has much more control over the d4 square. He has three pieces looking at d4 and soon to have a fourth if he wishes to. Your knight is uh, sort of blocking the c6 pawn and uh, it's going to be easy for white to jump into d5 and put pressure on f6 on c7. So I don't think this line is as good. Uh, I'm going to show you one game uh, from this position. <clears throat> So okay, the game is uh, the game is uh, Anatoly Karpov versus Yasser Seiravan, both great players. Yasser Seiravan, obviously, the most famous Pirts defense player uh, and the modern defense player by transposition. Sometimes uh, this game was played in 1992. So we have d6. Let's flip the board. Let's look at the game from Yasser Seiravan's perspective. Knight f3, g6, c4, bishop g7, knight c3. E5, Seiravan obviously goes for the most active continuation. Uh, E4, e uh, E4, Knight C6, and we have the this position by transposition. It started as a queen spawn, but now we have the position we were looking at here after the move Knight to C6 and E5. Uh, we have uh, this position, and uh, this is now the same. Uh, 
So, after the move knight to c6, uh, Anatoly Karpov did continue with bishop to g5, the main move, provoking f6, bishop to e3, knight h6, this is exactly what we were looking at, d5, d5, queen d8, king d8, castles, and we have this endgame which I don't think is favorable for black, however, Yasser Seiravan voluntarily went into this and managed to win the game. Uh, I'm not going to say that it was easy, I'm not going to say that he won out of the opening or anything, he managed to outmaneuver Karpov, but uh, I just wanted to prove that even the main line, and this is the main line, knight c6 is the main line, is playable for black. Uh, bishop to d7, covering the check is the main move and developing a piece. h3 is, I guess, an okay move, uh, stopping knight to g4, but uh, I'm not sure whether there are better moves available. After bishop to d7, uh, there have been 40 games with h3 and uh, one game with c5 in the live book, so I guess knight to g4 has to be stopped in minds of grandmasters. But there's another plan for this knight, and I was wondering whether after h3 uh, it's just a waste of tempo and you can just remaneuver your knight back here and put pressure on both the pawns. But, however, h3, king c8, uh, he wants to bring his rook to d8 and probably fianchetto, fianchetto his king, c5, knight f7, and the knight does remaneuver itself, but it doesn't have the d6 square anymore. Bishop c4, challenging the knight, knight c to d8, defending. And you can see that Seiravan's posi position is sort of cramped, and he doesn't have space, and his pieces are inactive, especially his rooks. And uh, the engines give it as plus one for white. So even though the position is playable, and the engines don't really understand what it's like to play these positions, I would still rather take white b4, a very aggressive continuation by Anatoly Karpov, c6, stopping a further advance and, as I said, preventing the knight from entering d5, knight d2. Uh, the knight is now looking at a very weak square on d6, and if you can get a knight into d6, that would be the octopus knight and the end of the game. So black is going to have to fight for control over the d6 square. Probably one of the best plans would be rook to e8 and then bishop to f8, looking at d6. Bishop to e6, challenging the bishop, uh, bishop e2, bishop h6, bishop takes, knight takes, knight c4, looking at the d6 square, and if I were playing this position, I would immediately take, <laughs> and I would be too scared of knight d6, he played knight d to f7, controlling the square, a4, I would also be uh, worried about this, I mean, why allow it... Uh, you are basically giving giving black the file, let's say you play this and then white can double up, it's it's scary. After knight d to f7, Karpov continued with a4, uh, king c7, b5, rook a to d8, b6, check, king b8. And here Seiravan equalized because I think that b5, b6 was the wrong plan, but still... Uh, I think Karpov should have played this position better. Obviously now uh, this square is free to use for black. Rook d4 takes it up immediately. Knight c2, rook d1 check, rook takes, rook d8, king b2, f5, uh, breaking open the queen side, the king side, a5, knight g8, rook takes, knight takes, king a3, knight f6, and now we are sort of in a minor piece, uh, late middle game end game, in which White's advantage is that he has the advanced pawns uh, on the on the queen side, and uh, Black's advantage is that he has a pawn majority on the king side. And I don't know. I think Black is starting to be better here. Let's uh, let's not continue. I'm just going to show you how the game ended. Here, Seiravan obviously outplayed Karpov and managed to get some pawns, and now this is just over. Uh, let's go over the opening once again. So the position after knight c6. So bishop g5, f6, bishop e3, knight h6, d5, d5, queen takes d8, king takes d8, castles, bishop d7, h3, remember it as a thematic move, you want to stop knight to g4. King c8, you need to uh, take up the file with black and... I don't know, I just like the Averbach system for white, if, if this is the main line and one of the best ways for black to play, then poor black. Yeah, uh, look at some more games, you can find a lot of them in the databases, as I said, after the move h3, uh, there are still 
plenty plenty games to, to look at. And uh, Black is scoring surprisingly well. Uh, there's a game between Gawain Jones playing with the white pieces against Stargrim Steingrimson, an Icelandic player uh, from 2016 where Black won as well. You should check that one out. There's a bunch of draws, but basically the position scores well for Black even though it seems cramped and weird. Okay, uh, thanks very much for watching. I hope you liked this video on the Averbach system. Remember all the lines, knight f6 and knight d7 lead to the king's indian. e5 should be your only move with the black pieces. Knight c6, the quota variation should be avoided. And c6 and c5 aren't good, so I would recommend only the move e5. Uh, and uh, I hope you liked it, hope you le learned something. Please let me know what you think and uh, thanks very much. Thanks very much for watching, stay tuned for more chess. See you later, bye bye. Hi everyone, Stepan here. I'll continue the series on the modern defense with another sideline, another very ver venomous sideline for white, and that's the bishop attack. So after the move pawn to e4, g6, the modern defense, uh, once again, if you haven't seen the introductory video to the modern, please do, to grasp the basics. White takes up the center, d4, bishop to g7, and in the previous video we were looking at the move pawn to f4, the three pawns attack. Here we are going to look at the move bishop to c4. Now, uh, in the rest of the videos we are going to go over the more common variations. Firstly, the, the main line with knight to c3, uh, the tiger's modern, knight to f3, which is the two knights uh, line, and the c4, which leads to the uh, Averbach system. And in this position, after c4, I just want to briefly mention this move, c4, d6, uh, knight to c3, uh, this Averbach system is probably the most thematic variation for, uh, for white and probably the most aggressive one, apart from maybe, maybe the main line. But the main difference here, and why I wanted to show you the Averbach briefly, is that you are hardly ever going to be developing your bishop to c4, and especially in the opening. And the main difference between the bishop attack and the Averbach system and the other variations of the modern is that white seemingly neglects uh, taking up the broad center and develops the bishop instead. Now, uh, this move has its upsides and has its downsides, so let's go back, d4, bishop to g7, c4. You don't play uh, c4... Uh, in the Averbach system fashion, you don't play f4 in the three pawns attack, which you would play in the three pawns attack. You develop your bishop instead, and uh, this goes slightly against the classical principles, and this is probably uh, the most anti-classical variation uh, white could choose against the modern, because normally against the modern defense you either play c4, or you play f4, taking up more space in the center with your pawns, or you develop one of your knights to c3, or the other one to f3, which is in the classical chess principles where you develop your knights before you develop your bishop, uh, a very sensible thing to do. So bishop to c4 is slightly uncommon, and it's the seventh most popular move, so not many players who play the modern defense uh, will, will know this move, and that's what makes it so dangerous for them. We are going to look over several responses black has, d6, c6, uh, c5 and e6, and we are going to look at one game in which Topalov uh, played Magnus Carlsen from 2015. Magnus Carlsen had the black pieces, Topalov went for the bishop attack and got uh, destroyed, so we are going to look at what black can do against the modern defense. But let's continue first with the move d6. Uh, the move d6 is the most popular move uh, which grandmasters play. Okay, and uh, the move e6 is the best move according to the engines, we are going to go over that last. After the move d6, uh, white has two options. White can either continue with knight to f3, or white can continue with a more aggressive queen to f3. Now, the threat is obvious, after queen to f3 you're simply threatening mate in 1 on f7, and that's one major upside of, the, of having the bishop on c4. Uh, you are targeting the f7 weakness. And as opposed to the Kolmov system in the Pierce defense, if you haven't seen it, uh, look at, uh, check out that video. In the Kolmov system of the Pierce, uh, Black has already developed his knight to f6, so it's much easier to castle. This is also similar to the to some variations of the Italian, where 
white is exerting pressure on the f7 square via g5 with his knight and his bishop from c4 and whenever black is unable to castle it makes uh, the position unpleasant for him and black is often forced to play moves such as d5 especially in the italian so this is one way to exploit the position and if white chooses to play the move queen to f3 of course black isn't losing black simply has to block out uh, this threat and the best way to block it out is e6 if black plays knight to f6 here that that runs into pawn to e5 and you are losing so knight f6 e5 and that's it this this is just lost and you basically can't do anything to save the position so after d6 white could either go for the very aggressive queen to f3 or knight to f3 which is a developing move once again knight to f3 would be a sensible move according to classical chess principles uh, queen to f3 is more aggressive so let's look at the queen to f3 sideline e6 knight to e2 developing supporting your pawn of course uh, black can't have taken the the d4 pawn on the previous move because f7 was hanging knight c6 putting more pressure on d4 c3 defending and whenever white manages to get this pawn structure against the modern uh, i find it very easy to play and uh, i think that Wasting a tempo on c3 and taking up a square for your knight, which normally doesn't go to c3, is good because then this bishop doesn't have that much influence on the diagonal. And if you can reduce the, the, the influence of the g7 bishop, then black's position isn't as good. Because in the hypermodern openings, such as the modern or the pivots, the g7 bishop is one of your ma main fighting weapons. Uh, black here continues with knight to f6, bishop g5, pinning the knight, and now... Here is something black often plays in this variation of the modern. Uh, black is going to play h6, and now you have to decide what to do with your, with your bishop. Uh, there is no rule for where to put your bishop. You can put it on h4 and then to g6. Most often after a bishop to h4, black isn't going to play g5 uh, anyway. You can also put it on f4, you can put it on 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 e3 uh, don't put it on d2 because your uh, your knight wants to go to d2 so either so either h4 f4 or e3 i myself prefer the move bishop to h4 because then i can read out to g3 and put pressure along this diagonal uh, black's most common move here is e5 so we are going to have a clear target after h3 uh, you want to prevent this from happening uh, g5 bishop g3 castles knight d2 e d4 knight d4 this bishop is now very active and you can look forward to the move e5 yourself in some positions and uh, try to play actively now Black's bishop is fine, he's still staring at the c3 pawn, uh, Black's knights are fine, all of black pieces are okay, and uh, there's no not that much for white in this variation. This is why after the move d6, which is the most popular move humans play against the bishop attack, I would recommend the move knight to f3. Uh, just developing a piece. Queen to f3 is a threat, but you're not playing it to mate on f7, you're playing it for activity and for space, but I still think knight to f3 is better. Uh, black continues with knight to f6 and now this is very similar to the kolmov uh, system in the pirts the only difference is that the knight is on f3 and not on c3 and that's a big difference because now the e4 pawn is undefended but you still continue with the move queen to e2 same as in the kolmov castles castles bishop g4 pinning the knight e5 d5 d5 knight d5 knight b to d2 uh, you don't have that much control in the center uh, this is probably uh, a fairly equal position. Uh, the pawn structure is similar, 3-3 three three on the queen side, 4-4 four four on the king side. Uh, you have a slight lead uh, in development. Uh, black yet has one piece to develop. I'm sorry, you don't have a lead in development. You have a space advantage and you might have a lead in development because black is going to have to play uh, some moves to preserve uh, the central control or to put pressure on the e5 pawn. So black con continues with knight to b6 here, bishop to d3. Going to b3 is fine, but uh, d3 is a more common move because you sort of stop f5 ideas and f6 ideas because then g6 is a weakness. Knight to c6, h3, knight d4, uh, you only have one move, queen to e4. And now knight takes f3, knight takes f3, bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, c6, and... A very similar position uh, and for both sides sort of equal the only difference is that white has the bishop pair and the position is semi-open there's no pawn on the d file so i would prefer to have white but once again nothing major so against the move d6 uh, best case scenario you end up uh, with the bishop pair in a symmetrical pawn structure which is okay and white is supposed to have a slight edge but it's nothing major 
Now let's look at uh, the second most popular move, the move c6. And uh, we are going to look at the game Topal of Carlsen uh, to show you an example of what Carlsen did. After c6, white plays knight to c3 or queen to f3. Uh, you once again choose between moving one of your knights, developing one, your, one of your knights, or playing queen to f3. Uh, once again, I believe that knight c3 is a more sensible move. Queen, f, queen f3 is fine, uh, putting pressure on f7, but after e6, since black hadn't played d6, I think this is more favorable for black because now both of the pawns are supporting the d5 break and black hadn't lost the tempo on d6 so after knight e2 d5 bishop b3 knight e7 knight bc3 I don't like this structure for, for white if you choose to play uh, knight to d2 that, and to play c3 then still you, you are going to have a hard time developing your pieces this is why I really don't like the move d, uh, queen to f3 the only upside of the move is that black has far too many uh, dark squared, uh, squared weaknesses in his position and if you manage to exchange this very valuable g7 bishop then you are going to have uh, an easy time in the middle game but it's very hard to exchange the bishop and that's why i think that after the move c6 you should play the move knight to c3 simply developing stopping d5 and putting more control over the central squares d6 uh, but can also play the move d5 here but I think it's, it's slightly less precise and it's very aggressive. White can continue with ED and black's best try now is b5, chasing the bishop away, bishop d3 and now b4. And after knight a4, the best move is not even to take the pawn. So this is a pawn sacrifice which I don't really like. And that's why after the move knight to c3 I would recommend d6, simply creating a small center and going for the move e5 later on or e6. Uh, here white can continue with queen to f3. Uh, black can here choose between knight to f6 uh, and yeah between knight to f6 and e6 I believe that e6 is a better move knight to f6 provokes the move e5 and then white gets to open up the position and the black king is still in the center now opening up of the position is going to mean that it's losing for black but it's going to be easier to play for white so after knight f6, white simply plays e5. And after d5, d5, knight d5, you have blocked this diagonal. But knight d5, c d5, queen d5, white gets to win a pawn, black castles. And now if white wants to, he can just exchange the queens and be a pawn up. It's better not to exchange the queens, but still, after knight to f6, white forcibly win, wins a pawn. So even though the engines say it's equal, I would recommend not going into a middle game a pawn down, especially if white can exchange the queens. So after knight, so after queen to f3, not knight f6, play e6, just defend this way, knight g2, e2, knight e7, castles, knight gf6, bishop b3, a normal position. Uh, Black has wasted a lot of time on moving his pawns, uh, the c8 bishop is particularly bad and it's a long way away from uh, developing itself, so I prefer white. Now let's look at how Magnus Carlsen uh, treated this position. So, um, bishop to c4, the bishop attack, uh, Magnus played the move c6, with, which we've just been over. Uh, in this position, sorry. In this position, uh, Topalov didn't play the move knight to c3, he played queen to f3. And now we have e6, uh, defending this way. Of course, we said the, the move d5 is coming, knight to e2, what we were looking at. d5, bishop to b3, this is the ex exact position we had, so Magnus has conceded to having a lot of dark squared weaknesses, but as long as this bishop is on the board, he is fine. Knight d7, knight bc3. Uh, this was an okay move. I, I, I'm not really sure. Well, I mentioned this problem. If you go to d2, then uh, to play c3, then your bishop is blocked. So this is the best option. Knight e7, castles, castles. Now we have rook to d1, b6, preparing to fianchetto the bishop or play bishop to a6, bishop f4, bishop to b7, bishop to d6. Sort of getting into white into black's position, and here you can see the downside uh, for black that white has almost a free hand on the dark squares and uh, if the move e5 happens then well I, I think that the bishop is going to be very strong on d6 uh, rook to e8 by by magnus h3 topalov didn't play the move e5 we have knight to f6 and now the move e5 by topalov and uh, well you could argue whether the bishop is useful on d6 i think after the move knight to d7 uh, magnus wanted to provoke this move and now uh, White can either exchange the bishop, which is the best move, or leave himself with a bishop which is only influencing a handful of squares, and 
Even though taking was best, he played knight to g3, and now black is just better. Black has no problems. So, if you are brave enough to accept all of the dark squared weaknesses, then and play like Magnus Carlsen, then this position is fine, but be careful. Knight c8 was played, and now Magnus simply declines the trade and prepares to leave this bishop here or exchange it. Bishop to a3, not wanting to exchange the bishop, and I mean, it, it, it's a, it's an okay bishop, but it's not attacking anything, so what do you do? If I turn the engine on, you can see that it's minus 0.5. c5 now, the thematic break for uh, for black, dc5, bc5, bishop a4, knight c to b6, queen to e2. Even though white has the bishop pair, the bishop pair is meaningless, and uh, black has the bishop pair too, but... Uh, Black's position seems so harmonious. I really am not sure where, where it all went wrong. Let's go back. C6. As you can see, the engines love uh, white in all variations of hypermodern openings. Queen f3. E6. Knight e2. D5. This is okay. Bishop b3. This is okay. Main moves, main moves, castles, castles. Okay. Rook to d1. A slight inaccuracy, but okay. B6. Uh, giving an advantage to Topalov. Bishop to f4 going for this plan of bishop to d6, so I guess this plan was incorrect, And but what do you do with your bishop if you don't do that? Perhaps it's bet better to leave it on g3. Bishop b7, bishop d6. Still okay, equal. h3, a mistake. Why did he play h3? I can't really see. A knight f6, e5, and seems that e5 was the crucial mistake. It's defending your own bishop, it's blocking out black's bishop, but... It's leaving your position uh, open to the c5 break, and since black has already played b6, c5 is coming. So yeah, I, I wanted to show you this game just to give you an idea of how dangerous the position is for white, even though he, he seems to have more space and more peace activity. So c6 is a fine move, and when I was analyzing this game, I, I thought to myself that c6 is the best response for, uh, for black. <clears throat> Okay, uh, now let's look at c5. c5 is slightly more aggressive, uh, striking in the center immediately. You can take the pawn, but then queen a5 check, and uh, black wins the pawn back, and uh, has annoying pressure on this diagonal. So I wouldn't recommend that. I think d5 is the best move, still with pressure here, but at least keeping central control. Uh, the second move after c5 you can play is queen to f3 once again, attacking f7, and now d5. Uh, for black is the main move, ed5, uh, cd4. Knight e2, a sharp line, but I once again I wouldn't recommend the move queen f3, so after c5 play d5. Now black's main move, you might be surprised what it is, it's b5. Uh, taking, of course, uh, no, no, if you take, you, you, you lose the bishop, queen a5 check, so bishop to e2. Queen a5 check anyway, knight to d2, knight f6, c3, keeping this bishop inactive on the diagonal and defending this diagonal so that the knight can move. And of course, there was an immediate threat of knight takes e4, so c3 is unpinning the knight, so the pawn isn't hanging. Castles, a4, trying to open up the queen side, e6, d6, bishop e7, e5. What can you say about this position? I mean, uh, taking on g2, this is now a tactical continuation, and if taking on g2, then pawn takes f6, and uh, after pawn f6, white can play bishop to f3 and b uh, have two pieces for the rook. So the position is better for white, and black can't really take. The main move is knight d5. But uh, I'm not really sure about this position. White is supposed to be slightly better, but c5 seems like a very dangerous move to face, and uh, this is actually what I'm preparing against the most, uh, because I plan to play uh, bishop c4, the bishop attack, most often against the, against the modern. And my pawns on d6 and on e5 are too overextended, and I don't really like my position. I have a feeling that I'm going to have to play the move f4 and then knight to f3, and my position is going to be weak. Okay, I have pressure on the queen side, and I have more space, and in any endgame this is going to be a weakness, and my pawns are going to be closer to queening, but I'm not really sure. So c5 is something I'm afraid of, and I would recommend uh, for players with black pieces to try out the move c5. And the last variation is what's best according to the engines, and that's the movie 6, simply not giving white the option of queen f3 and putting pressure on f7. The problem with the movie 6 is that you're creating dark squared weaknesses, and in conjunction with the move g6, it's considered to be uh, a mistake. And e6 and g6 should never be played together, 
if you follow chess principles, but in this position the engine says it's best. It's a very rarely played move and I can see why, because if you exchange your bishop then you are just dead on the dark squares, so I wouldn't recommend it, but let's look at what the engine thinks. Knight c3, knight e7, knight f3, d5, uh, striking in the center, bishop b3, knight bc6, e5, and now you can already see what white is going for. Uh, if I were white in this position, I would go bishop to e3, queen to d2, bishop h6, exchange the bishop, h4, h5, kill black on the dark squares, and the plan is as simple as that. Castles, the main move here is actually h4. Now, the engine likes two moves, h5 and f6, I think h5 has to be played. If you play f6, then ah, ef6, rook f6, h5. How can you survive this position? I don't think anybody can survive this. This is just too loose. Weakness on e6, weakness on g6. The king is unsafe. The position is just ridiculous. So after h4, h5 would be my preferred move. Bishop g5, pinning the knight. Uh, knight a5, attacking the bishop, but castles. b6, queen d2, preparing with, uh, to play bishop to h6 in some positions. c5, trying to open up the position. Rook f to e1, rook to b8. Rook a to d1. Uh, yeah, if uh, after rook f to e1, black plays c4, then you still have this move and you're not losing a piece. So, I don't really like the movie 6. Uh, the engines give it at plus 0.5, plus 0.7 for white, so I'm not sure why this is the best. I think c5 and c6 are much more active, and especially since white can have a very huge attack if after h4 black doesn't stop that. So... Even though the engines think f6 is fine, don't be tempted to play that because after f6, ef6, rook f6, h5, you, you are going to have a hard time defending. Uh, okay, those are the four moves I wanted to show you. Uh, I actually wanted to cover the bishop attack to give the players with white pieces a very strong sideline weapon uh, against the modern because nobody really plays this. And uh, I hope you, you learned something. I hope you're going to use it in your own games. I, I think it's a great opening. And if you play the modern uh, study Topal of Carlsen 2015 uh, to remind yourself of what Carlsen did, he played with his dark squared weaknesses magnificently and Topalov was just lost even though he, he, he played fine seemingly. Okay, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, please tell me whether you plan to use the variation. I hope you liked the video and uh, thanks very much. Stay tuned for more chess. See you later. Bye bye. Hi everyone, Stepan here. Today I'm going to continue the series on the modern defense with the standard line, which is the most common way for, for white to fight the hyper-modern modern defense. So after pawn to e4, pawn to uh, g6, uh, if you haven't seen the, the introductory video on the modern, please do, just to, to make sure that you grasp the basics of the opening. But basically what, what uh, black is doing, he's going for a hyper-modern uh, chess approach and he is declining to take up central space with uh, the classical responses such as e5 or, or c5 and instead of that black is preparing to fianchetto his bishop castle his king and then strike at uh, white center with the move c5 so white should oblige take up the center white plays the move d4 and black plays bishop to g7 continuing his development now uh, we have been over some uh, rarer responses for, for white. Today we are going to, uh, to look at the most common move, knight to c3. And this move has been played in 20,000 uh, strong games, so it's by far the most popular response. The second most popular response is only 6,000 games. And this is called the standard line, even though this will branch out into three major openings, either the pseudo-Austrian attack with f4, uh, the two knights with knight to f3, or variations of the Tiger's Modern, which is sort of a new name, uh, a defense named after Tiger, Tiger Hiller Persson, uh, a Swedish grandmaster, which he introduced in his great books, and that's basically uh, the move pawn to a6. In general, after knight to c3, the opening is called the standard line of, of the modern defense. So now what can black do? Uh, black has two responses. I would like to look at uh, one sideline first. After knight to c3, uh, the move c6. And the move c6 is not as popular and it's fairly straightforward. Um, and it's, I think, easy for, for white to face. White is going to continue with knight to f3, simply developing his knight, going for 
If this were the Pirt's defense with the knight on f6, this would be the classical approach. And black continues with d5, striking at the center. h3, just ignoring that. White would be happy if, if black takes, just recapture with the knight. Instead of that, h3 is preventing any pins uh, with bishop to g4. And any future knight to g4, if uh, white wishes to do that. Knight to f6. E5, the most logical continuation, knight to e4, and now this line is pretty forced, and that's why I don't like the move c6 for black. Uh, knight e4, d4, knight g5, keeping pressure on the on the e4 pawn. C5, black needs to get some activity for the loss of a pawn, which is inevitably about to happen. Uh, so now bishop to c4, threatening the f7 pawn. Castles, c3, defending. You always want to recapture with the pawn. Uh, first of all, it's hanging, but ideally you want to recapture with the pawn to keep the defense of the e5 pawn. cd4, cd4, knight c6, double attacking the pawn, bishop to e3, defending once more. Queen a5, check. Uh, king f1 is the best move, h6, knight e4. And this is a very forced line, which I really don't see why black would go for. Uh, let's go over it again. So after knight to c3, if you play c6, you're sort of committing to the move d5, which has e5 inevitably coming. Uh, this is sort of a bad advanced Karokan for black. Knight f3, d5, h3, knight f6, e5. And it's strange, the pieces are cramped and you don't really have any better move but knight e4 knight e and you're going to lose the pawn. Of course, it's playable for, for black and it's not lost, but why would you concede to being a pawn down out of the opening if you don't have to? So the c6 sideline, I really wouldn't recommend. Instead of that, after knight to c3, there's only one uh, very good move for black and the most common move, and that's pawn to d6. And now we are continuing in your hyper-modern fashion, creating a sort of king's Indian pawn structure uh, for, for black, and you are going to aim for the move c5, and d6 helps with that. Uh, white has three responses here. White can either play bishop to e3, which is the most common move, f4 or knight to f3. Knight to f3 is the rarest, so I would want to go over that first. Uh, after knight to f3, if black continues with knight to f6, this is now the classical pirts, and you have transposed, so I went over that, you can watch the video on the classical pirts if you like. Instead of that, we are going to go uh, for the approach in the modern defense, specifically uh, tiger healer person's approach with pawn to a6, and his move it's, he didn't invent the move, obviously, he just made it popular and gave it, gave it a name. His move a6 has a pretty clear idea, even though in the two knights variation with knight to f3, uh, you are not going to go for the common team in the Tigers modern, which is b5, bishop b7, c5. Instead of that, in the two knights variation, black is going to aim for the hippopotamus setup. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with that, that's the setup where uh, black plays a6, b6, d6, e6, and g6, and h6 <laughs> uh, most often, and uh, then develops his knights to e7 and to d7 and fianchetto his, fianchetto his bishop. So it's a pretty strange setup, but very flexible, and it gives you a lot of options to break in the center, which... Uh, your opponent can't be prepared for, it's basically too much for white to handle and you can't stop all the threats. The threats not being that serious, of course, but black can break open that position if he wishes to. Now, after this uh, this move, a6, uh, a4 should be played, stopping the move b5. Now, if white doesn't play a4, then b5 would be a better move than b6. Now, b6. Uh, bishop to c4, looking at the f7 pawn, e6, creating the hippopotamus pawn structure. Castles, knight e7, rook e1, h6, and now you can see what I was talking about. This might seem strange and as a waste of time, but it's very flexible, as I said, and it gives black options. If you turn on the engine, this is more than plus one for white, but the engines are never objective in positions where black is playing on the first three ranks. Uh, in the King's Indian, in the Karo Khan, and in many cramped positions, uh, the engine is going to like white uh, a bit too much. Bishop f4, and you can see that white is basically playing as if he were looking at a textbook about classical chess, just developing his knights, then his bishops, then castling, bringing the rooks to the center, and white's position is perfect. Uh, bishop b7, queen d2, knight d7, h3, g5, 
bishop g3, knight to g6. And uh, here Black has developed his hippopotamus uh, structure and I have to say it's really fun to play these positions with the black pieces and uh, it's it's not without venom for white. Uh, black can castle and then go for f5, black can go for d5, black can go for c5, black can go for e5 or b5 and as I said white will have a hard time stopping all of these pawn breaks and uh, you basically have to be prepared for each one and if you weaken one point in the center or on the flanks then a strike could come and black could open up the center. Uh, secondly, black's bishops, uh, even though they don't seem to be doing much at the moment, are remarkably strong and you could argue much stronger than black's bishops who are looking at these two pawns. The point behind the hippopotamus setup is that uh, you open up your bishops and your opponent's bishops, which are mostly uh, on these squares, uh, in, in the setups are going to look at, at at a pawn chain which is going to be hard to break through. So I think that the hippopotamus structure is really fun and uh, modern defense players should learn how to deal with, with these structures and players with white should learn how to fight the hippopotamus and there isn't really one rule of how to prevent black spawn breaks but you need to you need to get feel for the position and play it out a few times to, to be able to grasp it properly. So after knight c3, d6, knight to f3, I would recommend to move a6 and uh, going for the hippopotamus setup. If white doesn't stop the immediate b5 with a4, then I would recommend to move b5 instead of b6 and bishop to b7 immediately. And then you are sort of in the tiger's modern uh, with slightly uh, more chances. Okay, the next move after d6 is pawn to f4 and this is called the pseudo-Austrian attack after the Austrian attack in the Pierce defense. Obviously uh, had the knight, the knight been developed to f6 this would be the Austrian attack so uh, Black's second most popular move knight to f6 actually leads to the to the Austrian attack in the Pierce. Once again if you haven't seen that video I have made a detailed video on the variations so I'm not going to go into too much uh, detail here, knight f3 castles, bishop d3, this is the vice variation of the Austrian attack, I think better for white but playable for black. But let's go back, after the move pawn to f4, uh, we are now going, going to enter the tiger's modern. Um, I'm actually, oh, just as a digression, uh, I'm happy to hear that uh, a modern grandmaster managed to get a variation named after him and I think it's quite an accomplishment. Uh, Tiger uh, Hiller Persson says that his editors uh, named the variation uh, the modern tiger uh, because the, the, the defense is called the modern defense, his, his name is tiger and it's sort of caught up and uh, now everybody is using the name and I, I think it's great and I think he should be proud to have a variation named after him especially because it's not really a variation, it's a system which could be flexibly uh, applied to many positions in the modern. I'm going to flip the board for this. And now uh, the, the, the Tiger's Modern has a few ideas behind it. Firstly, you are going to delay the, the development of this knight. Uh, that's one thing. The second thing is you want to go for a6 in order to prepare b5. And after you play bishop to b7, which uh, b5 enables, you want to break open the center with the move c5 and then only play knight to c6 or knight to d7. So these are the basic ideas. You're going to ignore what white is doing in the center and you're going to play on the queen side. So pawn to a6, knight to f3 is the most common response by white, b5, bishop to d3, knight to d7, e5. White has to uh, keep gaining space and uh, there's nothing better for white to do than to, than to play e5. He could castle also, but this is more active. And uh, black is sort of waiting like a crouching tiger and waiting to strike when the opportunity arises. So now c5, trying to blast things open. Uh, bishop to e4, attacking the rook. Rook to b8. And this is now a very forcing line uh, in which black sacrifices the exchange. And this is the main line thought to be equal. Uh, you can play differently, obviously, uh, instead of c5. But I think c5 is, is the best move. You can play bishop to b7 first if you want to avoid that, but after bishop to b7 and white castling, you don't have that much activity. And now c5, you are not stopping bishop to e4 anyway, because now bishop e4, knight e4, and you have problems on these two squares, and you have given up your very strong bishop. So I'm not sure this is uh, much better. Instead, after knight d7, e5, c5, 
uh, you are allowing the move bishop to e4 and this forcing line you now have to play rook to b8 and after white castles your best move is cd4 and after knight d4 you play d takes c5 and this now allows uh, a fork which uh, sort of can be stopped with queen to b6 but you but you are going to uh, give up the exchange anyway so knight to c6 forking king uh, sorry queen and rook queen b6 check king h1 and now knight g to f6 should be played not moving your rook because you don't really have anywhere else to move it uh, the bishop is staring at these two squares so moving the rook would fail tactically so you need to develop your knight and you need to castle and after knight takes b8 queen takes b8 f takes e5 knight takes e5 uh, the situation is as follows black has six pawns white has five pawns and black has given up uh, the exchange so you could now argue uh, which piece is better is this knight better than this rook I would say yes, and uh, <clears throat> this is basically Kasparov's uh, idea of material versus quality versus time. And in this in this situation, I think that the exchange sacrifice is more than justified because Black firstly has a, a superior piece on the board, the the e5 knight compared to the a1 rook, and secondly, Black is a pawn up. Now, what you have to be afraid of is trading off material and going into an endgame. If you enter an endgame, then you're going to be worse because rooks are much better in an endgame. The engines uh, think that this is slightly, slightly better for white. This is plus, plus 0 0.5, plus 0 0.3, almost equal, and... I'm I, I'm always afraid to sacrifice material, but that's me. That depends on your on your style. And if you feel li like playing risky chess, then this is the ideal setup for you. Uh, for more information on this, I would recommend you get Tiger's book uh, on the Tiger's Modern. There's a new edition now also. So there you have 250 pages on positions like this one. I'm not going to go into that much detail, obviously. Uh, now to continue the position, Bishop f4, castles. Uh, bishop f3, b4, chasing the knight away, but now queen to e2, instead of moving the knight, simply double attacking this knight. And now, this isn't opening theory anymore, there have been uh, games played from this position, four or five games, uh, Grandmaster games, but this is irrelevant for the topic, and obviously when, when you play this variation uh, with black, after... Uh, Pawn to f4, pawn to a6, knight f3, b5, bishop d3, knight d7, e5. Here you need to make uh, a very important decision. Whether you will play bishop to b7, trade off your bishops and prepare for the knight coming into e4 and you are going to have trouble defending your c5 pawn and your d6 pawn. Or if you want to give up the exchange for activity. The choice is yours. I mean, uh, both variations are playable. I would recommend going for the exchange sacrifice, but... I'm not sure if I would uh, do it myself. So, okay, uh, that was the pseudo-Austrian attack, uh, the second most common move for white. So remember that after the move knight to f3, black goes for the hippopotamus setup with pawns here, okay, and then fianchettoing both bishops, playing knight here, knight g6, striking in the center later. After pawn to f4, you are going to go for the tiger's modern setup with a6, b5, bishop b7, c5, and knight to d7. But remember that in some lines you have to give up the exchange. And now let's go over the main line. After d6, bishop to e3 is the main, 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 main line for white. And you are going to see this in 90% of your games. This is objectively the, the best way to play. After bishop to e3... Uh, there is one move, one sideline for black, which I would want to cover briefly, and that's c6. After c6, queen to d2, b5, bishop to d3, knight d7, knight f3. You have transposed to the to the peers, uh, to the peers defense. After black plays knight to f6, which is going to happen in a couple of moves, so pawn to c6 sort of goes into the peers, and I want to want to go over the tiger's modern lines here, which are by far the most popular move and a6 has been played here before uh, he wrote the book on that so this is objectively the best this plan with b5 uh, white now continues with queen to d2 and you go for b5 the difference here is that uh, the bishop is obviously not able to get into e4 and that the pawn can't really go to e5 because the pawn isn't on f4 so now you can continue with your with your plan normally and just coming back to the f4 line, um, Tiger Hiller person in one video said that uh, he pondered for 10 years 
about whether A6 was playable in the pseudo Austrian attack setups, and he concluded that it was. I just forgot to mention that. So after B5, uh, White will White will play F3 here. That's not the only move. Uh, you can play A4, you can play H4, you can play Bishop to D3, uh, but I would recommend the move F3. Uh, one uh, very aggressive way to play is when White castles, but I think that's sort of getting into trouble on the Queen side. Uh, even though the Black King is obviously going King side, this could be problematic. Now Bishop to B7, F3, closing down uh, this very strong pawn structure. Knight to d7 uh, and h4. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be, if you've seen uh, my last video on opposite sides castling, it's going to be a very aggressive game. And as white, uh, in the in the Pirts and in the modern and in most hyper-modern defenses, you're going to have more space, which means you're going to have more minor piece activity. So, uh, in any positions when you have more, when you ha where you have more space, uh, you want to keep the minor pieces on the board. And that's enough of an advantage in itself, and you don't have to risk opposite sides castling. Obviously, uh, most often it's going to be okay and you're going to have a quicker attack, but I think that in the modern defense you have uh, enough activity as it is and that it's uh, unnecessary to, to castle here. So after queen to d2, b5, I would recommend the move f3. Just slightly uh, slowing down your game, waiting to see what black is doing, solidifying your structure, and now after knight to d7, play h4. You don't have to castle yet, you can strike at black's king side immediately, not waiting, not wasting a move on castling because you want to create an attack yourself. And these pawns are quite overextended and uh, they could come up uh, by your uh, queen side castle king very fast. h5, stopping the counterplay, this is the only move. Knight h3, bishop b7, knight g5. Now, uh, this is the main line of the modern, and this is the main line of the main line of the modern, and it's very chaotic, and obviously white is doing whatever he can to stop black's counterplay on the flanks, uh, while neglecting his own development and neg ne neglecting the classical chess principles, and black is aiming to create as much problems for white as possible. Now, uh, black is going to continue with knight gf6, a4, extending on the queen side as well, c6, simply de uh, defending the pawn, bishop to e2, and now castles. And uh, here is what I, where I would like to stop. I would like to talk about this position for a while. Uh, this is what you're going to get most often. Uh, if white doesn't play f3, then positions aren't going to look like this. But if white does go for f3, which is objectively the best move and which deals too much uh, problems for black, then as black, in this position, you are going to need to look for counterplay. And uh, one problem I see in this position for black, which I've had myself, is that white hasn't committed to castling either side yet. And it's really hard to waste a couple of tempi on, the, on attacking on the queen side or breaking up the center if you don't know where the king is going. So you're going to have to wait for, uh, for a little while, while long, longer. The main move here for white is actually to castle king side. Uh, if the white king castles king side, then you sort of have an easier game and you know that white isn't going to kill you uh, on the king side that easily because pushing the pawns in front of his king is going to be very risky. But white could also do several other things and uh, yeah, I, I think it's slightly better for white, but the tiger's modern is probably the, the best attempt. Now let's go back to this position after b5. Uh, if white continues normally, uh, if he doesn't play f3 or castles, if he simply plays bishop to d3, you can now continue with your, with your normal Tiger's modern plans, knight to d7, supporting the c5 square. Uh, white is going to play a4, trying to break up your structure, and you continue with b4. After b4, knight c2, e2, of course, c5. This is your main idea. After c5, you manage to achieve what you wanted. You gain space, you challenge the center, and now you are waiting for white to do something. White is going to support the center with knight to f3, queen c7, defending the weakness c3 breaking up the structure bc3 always take with the pawn towards the center bishop to b7 and now this is also one of the main lines white castles here uh, this is the second most thematic position in the tigers modern in the standard line of the modern defense uh, i think as black you manage to achieve a lot here firstly you have two monster bishops secondly uh, you are an inch away from breaking open this wonderful structure uh, thirdly, these four pieces aren't really that active, and they seem cramped, and uh, even though black is down in development, obviously black has more piece activity as it is, and 
you're going to have the open B file to work with. You have a weakness on A4 to exploit, which is going to be easier to exploit than your weakness on A6, especially if you manage to get the move A5 in. Uh, you can either play e6, knight to e7, weakening your dark squares, but uh, playing carefully, or you can go for knight to f6, uh, which can be scary sometimes because of e5. So you have problems castling, but your position is fine. Uh, and I actually think this is an achievement for, for black. The main move here is knight g to f6. And now white doesn't continue with the move e5. If he plays e5, then you get to break open the center, and it's not a big deal, and the pawn is hanging in this situation, so it can't be played immediately. Uh, okay, so white will normally continue with knight to g3, trying to arrange the move e5 and uh, play on from there. You can challenge the bishop here, knight to g4, play around white's uh, cramped pieces, white's going to play bishop to f4, and here you can actually play e5 yourself for castle. And... Even though this is no longer theory, I think it's very hard to understand these positions, so I'm trying to get in as much depth as possible. Uh, but basically what, what black is playing for, if we go back to the original position, e4, g6, d4, bishop, g7, knight, c3, d6, bishop to e3. With move a6, uh, you are going to delay your castling the development of the f6 knight. You want to play b5, knight d7, c5, bishop to b7, cause problems on these squares and attack the center from here. Okay, so this is your main idea. And in the process, you are going to create two very strong bishops on both diagonals, which can work great tactically together. And more often than not, white is going to be in tactical problems if he isn't careful much more often than, than, than black is. Okay, uh, once again, my recommendation, read Tiger's book uh, on, on, the, on, the, on the move A6. He goes in depth in all the, uh, in all the variations. Uh, be careful not to transpose to the Pirts, because the Pirts is, in my opinion, slightly easier to play uh, for white. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you liked it. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Please do let me know what you think and uh, stay tuned for more chess. See you later. Bye bye. Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, today I will continue the series on the modern defense with the three pawns attack, which is one of the uh, rare continuations for white, but one of the very aggressive setups which could lead to problems for black. And uh, it's similar to the Austrian attack in the Pierce defense, uh, where white also continues with pawn to f4, pushing his third pawn into the center. The difference is the main difference between the Pirates and the Modern, anyway, is that the Knight isn't on f6, so we are going to talk about some differences there. So after the move e4, uh, Black goes for the Modern defense, pawn to g6, White takes up the center, and if you haven't seen the introductory video on the Modern, please do. Uh, there I try to explain all the basics of the opening and main ideas for White and for Black. But basically what White is doing, he is accepting the broad center Black is giving to him by playing in hyper-modern fashion. So Black wants to fianchetto his bishop, castle his king, break open the center later with the, pawn, with the move pawn to c5, and White obliges, takes up the center. So Black continues with pawn to g7, and now we are going to look at the three pawns attack, which is pawn to f4. Uh, pawn to f4 is a very aggressive move, which gives white flexibility in his position, and which gives white uh, many more options in the attack than uh, black does have. And f4 uh, is preparing either to play the move f5, the move e5, or the move d5, with the center being supported much more now that the pawn is on f4. Especially in the cases where white pushes e5, you can see that the pawn is reinforced. And here we are going to talk about four moves for black. It might be surprising, but all four of them are playable and or all four of them are, uh, well, okay for black. I think white is slightly better in every variation, but all four moves are playable. And these moves are uh, d5, d6, c5, and c6. There are no other moves black could play. Uh, black basically has to react as soon as possible. If you think about black's setup and what he would like to achieve, he would like to castle his king, therefore he has to move the knight. So in order to castle, he would either have to play knight to h6 or knight to f6. If knight to f6 is played, then e5 immediately is better for white. And if knight to h6 is played, which uh, is often played afterwards, then black... Uh, doesn't have that much time to open up the center later on. So black has to play one of the four moves. The first move we are, we are, we are going to look at is the move d6, 
which is by far the most popular continuation. It does, however, uh, in most cases lead out of the modern and into the Pirts. And uh, very often this position is going to transpose to the Austrian attack in the Pirs defense, where Black uh, plays the same uh, the same move, the move pawn to d6, with his knight being on f6, and the white knight being on c3, defending uh, the e4 pawn. So the normal continuation for white here is knight to f3. Black continues with knight to f6. And now, if white continues with knight to c3, we have entered the Austrian attack. Let me, let me just show you that position here. So e4, uh, pawn to d6, the Pierce defense, d4, uh, knight to f6, uh, knight to c3 defending the e4 pawn, uh, g6, f4 the Austrian attack, bishop to g7, and knight to f3, uh, this is now the same position. So we have entered the, the same position that we have here. So this is uh, the Pierce defense by transposition. And we don't really want to do that with black, because if uh, if you play the modern defense, then you probably want to play the modern defense, and the Pierce is quite different. If you haven't seen the video on the Austrian attack in the Pierce, please do, it's recorded on the channel. So we are going to explain the other move black can play to avoid transposing to the Pierce. After the move f4, the three pawns attack d6, knight to f3. Black doesn't have to play knight to f6 entering the pierce. Black can play the move c5. And c5 is the most thematic move in the modern defense and the move which you are always going to want to play. And c5 is your main break in the position. White now has two options. By far, uh, the better option is to push the pawn forward to d5 and not take. If white takes, then a simple queen check is going to win the pawn back. And... Uh, White is going to have less control in the center with only these two pawns, missing his d4 pawn. So after c5, the best move for white is to play d5. And now, uh, after the move knight to f6, this is also a variation of the of the Austrian attack in the Pirts, but slightly different, and black has already broken in the center. So this would be slightly favorable. But remember that... In every variation, after pawn to d6, it's highly likely that you will transpose into the Pierce defense if both players play correctly uh, into the Austrian attack, so I'm not going to talk about this, this move much longer. One key thing that you should remember is that after knight to f6, knight c3 uh, castles, bishop d3, e6 castles, uh, Black's main idea after bishop to d3 is to try to open up the center with the move e6. Now there are no more breaks, and after the move pawn to e6, castles e takes d, e takes d. This is what I was talking about in the in the introductory video. Very often in the modern defense, Black is going to have to concede to having a Benoni pawn structure. What does a Benoni pawn structure mean? It means that you have a bad uh, backwards pawn on d6 and this is going to be the Benoni weakness and white can easily surround uh, his play around winning this pawn so a uh, common Benoni maneuver would be knight from f3 to d2 knight to c4 putting pressure on the pawn a move such as f5 bishop to f4 putting pressure on the pawn a move such as knight to b5 putting pressure on the pawn and indeed these two maneuvers could be quite enough to to win the pawn so Black is going to be have uh, black is going to have to be extra careful after the move bishop to d3. If you don't play e6, then you can't break open the center, and if you do play e6, then you have nothing better to do but to enter the Benoni pawn structure. So be careful about this. That's why I would recommend after f4 the three pawns attack that you don't play the move d6 because uh, either way you are going to have uh, a downside in your position, which is going to be significant. The, the next move I wanted to talk about. Uh, is the move d5, slightly more aggressive, but leading to a bad position for black for a different reason. Now, the engines think that this position is almost equal. They always like white slightly because of the space advantage. But I think that the move d5 is, uh, well, it gives white quite an easy game. So after d5, there's nothing better for white to do than to continue with e5, the very logical move. And same as in the Pierce defense, what you want to do, you want to block out this bishop from the diagonal and kill black's main weapon. Now, in, uh, in hypermodern openings such as the King's Indian or the Benoni or, or the modern on the, or the Pierce, your bishop on g7 is your main attacking weapon. And if you get that dampened, then your position is going to be less good. Here, uh, black has two options. He can either play h5, knight h6, or simply knight h6. Uh, what's clear is that you have to develop your bishop, 
uh, at some point later on in the game you might want to play the move e6 but not here yet because your bishop is uh, blocked in then so it's going to be tougher to develop you want to play bishop to g4 first so basically what we what black wants to do is wait for the move knight to f3 pin the knight then play e6 uh, but in the meanwhile uh, in the meantime black will have to develop the knight and castle anyway so the move knight to h6 is a very logical choice uh, the second most popular move is h5 and then after knight to f3 knight to h6 here looking at this square but uh, whether this pawn is better on h7 or on h5 is arguable i actually prefer it on h7 because i don't think it's as much of a liability and you give white a clear option to play h3 g4 undermine uh, that structure so I would recommend that after the move e5 you simply play knight to h6, knight f3, castles, bishop to e2, bishop to g4. And now you are free to play the move e6 uh, whenever you want without your bishop being, being locked in on c8. Knight to a3 is a common plan for white. Um, why knight a3? Uh, even though c3 or d2 might seem like better options, uh, what you want to do is uh, put the brakes on c5 and since you can't stop black from playing that you want to be able to play the move c3 so knight to c3 is not an option uh, why you play knight to a3 is that because after c3 you can play knight to c2 and transfer your knight into e3 where it's going to be a very strong attacking piece especially after the move c5 this pawn is going to be weakened and you're going to be able to exert a lot of pressure on black's position the second thing is that once you get your knight from c2 to e3 you are looking at the f5 square where the h6 knight clearly wants to enter so you are challenging uh, black's idea knight f knight f5 castles uh, knight to d7 c3 e6 what we discussed knight c2 c5 this is why you played c3 dc5 knight takes and now you are able to play knight to d4 or knight to e3 knight to e3 is a better option challenging the f5 knight by far black's strongest piece and uh, even though the engines think this is almost equal slightly better for white from a human perspective it's very easy to play because you are playing against one black piece and that's the g7 bishop and you if you can manage to keep this bishop locked out of the game for the next 10 or 20 moves then white is going to win and it's fairly easy to see that white's pieces are much more active so that's for the move d5 uh, you have to concede to this your bishop being bad and then you need to open it up later on if you manage and you need to remember that your knight goes goes to h6 and then to f5 which might not be might not be as good i mean uh, it's very hard to play for black and that's why the move d5 shouldn't be your first option either one more sideline i would like like to mention is the move c6 uh, which isn't that challenging for white either white simply continues with knight to f3 now d5 c3 is reinforcing d5 but white plays c5 anyway and now we've just taken up a square for your knight on c6 and uh, I mean, there's not too much difference from the position we've seen last. Once again, knight h6 or h5. h5 is preferred move by grandmasters here. h5, bishop d3, knight h6, castles, castles. You basically have the same, the same issues. You are going to want to play bishop g4 and e6. And white is going to... Uh, white doesn't have to play c3 here because c6, c5 would be a loss of tempo. But it might not be a bad idea to get your knight to e3 anyway, challenging the f5 square. So c6... I really don't like and the best move for black uh, which I believe is uh, challenging for white is the move c5 and c5 is a very aggressive move challenging white center immediately if uh, white captures then of course queen check and winning the pawn once again so you can't really win a pawn uh, you can play e5 but that's not as good you will be weakening your center and the best move is d5 for white and after the move d5 you can see the main upside for black in this variation this bishop is alive and uh, if you can get this bishop to be active then you definitely achieved something compared to the last three variations where the bishop wasn't that strong i think that uh, this one is is much better the main downside of the move c5 which you are going to see shortly is that once again after the move d6 you're going to have to play the move e6 at some point and enter the Benoni pawn structure and uh, you're going to have similar problems to to the d6 variation knight f3 knight f6 this is now very similar to the variation that we saw with uh, with d6 in fact it's a transposition and now after knight c3 castles bishop d3 e6 uh, white can either castle which is uh, 
considered slightly worse. Or white can, white can take on e6, bishop takes e6, and castle now. And here you have it, the weakness on d6, which uh, can easily be exploited. Uh, the, the advantage of castling instead of taking on... on uh, after e6, instead of taking on e6, is that black is going to take here and you are going to fix the pawn on d6. So if you don't castle, then black has to take. I'm sorry. If you castle, then uh, black has to take. e takes d5. And after e takes d5, you now have the Benoni weakness to exploit once again. So let's repeat. Uh, knight to b5, attacking the pawn, knight to d2, knight to c4, attacking the pawn. Uh, attacking moves such as f5, breaking up white's uh, black's position and you are strategically better. Uh, the engines will tell you that black is better in this position. The engines much prefer uh, after e6 taking on e6. But I think for humans it's easier to castle and to allow this. So in any case, uh, I wanted to show you this variation first to start off the, the in-depth videos on the modern because I think that it's really hard for, for the modern defense player to fight against the three pawns variation. A simple move such as e4, g6, d4, bishop g7, f4 with the absence of the knight on f6, actually changes the position a lot. And uh, if you don't transpose to the Austrian attack, black is going to have to concede to a Benoni pawn structure or, or a dead bishop, which are two downsides, which are major. And uh, I think that if you go into the opening knowing that your position, your position is going to be better because your opponent is either going to have a bad bishop on g7 or a weak pawn on d6, you are starting the opening with an advantage on move one. Yeah, I, I think the, the three pawns attack is a wonderful way to fight the modern and I would advise the, the players with the black pieces to find something and once again I would recommend the move c5 firstly because it's the most energetic way to play your bishop is alive and the engines think you're better so you definitely stand the chance but try to yeah, try to go in depth on the move c5 if you are black I think this is the only worthy option and try to find uh, deadly things to stop white uh, okay, everybody, thanks very much for watching. I hope you liked this video on the three pawns attack in the modern defense. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if you've used it or if you plan to use it. And stay tuned for more chess. See you later. Bye-bye.